Hi, this is Ryan from Easy Theory. So I screwed up on the audio of this video, and so I'm going to up overdub it, which is what you are currently hearing right now. Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. I say a bunch of stuff here, and I guess I'm talking about uh, parse trees, and I guess today we're going to be talking about Chomsky normal form, so CNF, and how it relates to parse trees. And we and this will be actually really relevant for when we are talking about uh, the pumping lemma for CFLs because uh, it heavily use, utilizes their structure. So uh, remember that all grammars in CNF, see I'm writing it down, I have the structure, the start variable goes to epsilon possibly. Uh, any variable can go to a single terminal or any variable can go to two variables where the two variables are not the start variable. So <laughs> you see me do, doing the little loop d thing uh, to say that none, neither of the BC variables can make uh, epsilon. So I guess the question that, uh, that I want to address in this video is the one I'm writing, which is what structure does a CFG in CNF actually have? Um, yeah, it, what what kind of structure does its parse tree have? And uh, just because the grammars in Chomsky normal form, uh, because the right hand side has uh, only two variables or a single terminal, it turns out that we can actually simplify what the parse tree can actually look like. So you can see that this parse tree right here, because the grammar could theoretically have anything on its right side, it could uh, its parse tree could have any type of structure possibly. But because the grammars in CNF, in, in the case we're looking at here, the uh, grammar is actually a lot, the parse tree is gonna be actually a lot simpler. So I break it down into multiple cases here. It's not really truly necessary to do this, but uh, it's, it's just a, a good thought experiment. So if we have W being this uh, empty string, the only possible parse tree here is S making epsilon which is not really interesting. Um, if we have a single terminal, I can't produce two variables because those two variables, since they're not the start variable, have to make a, a non-empty string. And so the only possible parse tree in this case is S making a single uh, terminal and nothing else. And I think now I'm going to look at the case where the length of W is at least two. Because then you have you have to uh, apply the any rule where you produce uh, two variables, and and, and once uh, the length of W is at least two, it gets more interesting. Although it's not truly necessary to consider this, because when we use the pumping lemma for CFLs, uh, the there is a certain pumping length that is given, uh, and that could be way larger than two, and we don't really need to know what it is in advance. But here. What you notice is that I'm making this parse tree right here. If S goes to A, B, the sub parse trees under A and B, which are these yellow triangles, have nothing in common between them. Uh, and, and that's because, uh, because it's a context-free grammar, nothing, uh, you can only re replace one variable. You can't replace two variables. So there's nothing in common between these uh, two sub parse trees, which, which is actually kind of key. All right, it'd be so nice if I had sound on right now, but I I have no idea what happened with the recording on this and the other video, but, but we'll see. All right, so what am I talking about now? It's hard to read my lips. <laughs> what am I saying? And I'm, I'm sure talking quite a lot about and not actually doing anything on screen. Yes, I think I'm going into more detail about what I just said uh, in this overdub. Hmm. What am I saying? Yeah, I think I'm going to be drawing the the actual what the actual parse tree uh, structure looks like in a little bit because it looks like there's like three and a half minutes of video left. 
<laughs> All right. So yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. The the tree is binary because the other than at the very bottom of the tree, we're, when we're producing the terminals, um, the middle of the parse tree must have one variable producing two variables because that's the only possibility in the middle of the tree. So all nodes have exactly two children except for the ones at the bottom, which either have one or zero. The one child ones are the ones where the variable produces a single terminal, and the ones that have zero children are the terminals themselves. So here I, drew, I draw the famous pyramid um, type uh, parse tree looking thing. So in the middle we have A producing B and C in, in the internal part of the tree, and then way down at the bottom, uh, in the second to last layer, we have a bunch of variables, say D is producing a single terminal uh, D. So you, that's, an, that's a case of where the variable has exactly one child, and similarly over here. And it doesn't necessarily have to be these two variables, D and X, don't have to be at the same level. Um, D could be way higher in the tree. It's just at the bottom, across the bottom of the tree, wherever those are. It's, um, it has this structure. So the internal nodes have two children, and the ones at the bottom have either one child or two. No, sorry, one child or zero. All right, what else am I going to do here? It's like watching a silent movie. Ooh, subscribe, please subscribe. Ooh, please subscribe. <laughs> I like that famous YouTubers are using that exact same uh, um, little clip for subscribing too. It's kind of, I'm the first one to use it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, so the terminals have zero children because you can't replace a terminal with anything in a context-free grammar. So the terminals are at the end of the line. They're the terminals, <laughs> so to speak, of the parse tree. And, and this is the thumbnail of the video. So it should be close to the end. It looks like we have like a minute or so left. Hopefully I can edit this really quickly. So then, yeah, so I'm talking about like going from the top to the bottom, it's all variables along the way. And um, if it's variables along the way, if we make the tree big enough, then we can repeat a variable, which is the idea behind the pumping lemma for context-free languages, because we can repeat variables along the way because of that. So I, I should be wrapping up pretty quickly here. I even okay and that looks like it for this video bunch of stuff in the video description I point to my pants <laughs> uh, yeah so please subscribe uh, like the video and please subscribe it really helps us out and I'll see you next time